Welcome everyone to the video. First, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Ganeshwar, B.S. Swami. Today, I am going to take a presentation on the topic Clinical Examination of Radial Pulse. What is Radial Pulse? Before knowing what is Radial Pulse, first let us know what is Pulse. So, Pulse is the intermittent expansion of the vessel wall produced by the pressure changes due to the cardiac cycle. So, normally pulse means arterial pulse. Usually, it is felt over the radial artery at the wrist. Hence the name radial pulse. So, every one of us came to know what is radial pulse. So, now let us learn how to feel the radial pulse. So, first, you see the image over the right side of the slide. So, as you can see, the examiner has placed his three fingers over the lateral aspect of the distal forearm of the subject. And they have also neatly labeled the three fingers. So, which is the proximal finger, which is the middle finger and which is the distal finger. So, out of the three fingers, it is situated proximally in the forearm, lateral aspect. That is called proximal finger. And the finger which is situated distally out of all the three fingers in the distal part of the forearm is called distal finger. And the finger which is situated between the proximal finger and the distal finger is called the middle finger. So, in the lateral aspect, or the distal part of the forearm, right? So the radial artery just passes over the surface of the radius bone superficially. So that is where we place in the fingers. So how to feel the pulse? To feel the pulse, three fingers over the radial artery. The middle finger is the one which actually feels the pulse. The distal finger is always kept compressed to prevent the transmission of ulnar arterial pulse palmar arch. While by compressing the proximal finger and feeling the pulse at the middle finger can help to examine the force and tension of pulse and the condition of arterial wall. So, we learned how to feel the pulse. So, now let us learn the procedure. So, first familiarize yourself with feeling the pulse. Second, count the pulse for 1 minute. Subject should be rested for at least 5 to 10 minutes before counting the pulse. Third, observe the following characters of the pulse. We are going to calculate the rate. So, rate is nothing but feeling and counting the pulse for 1 minute. So, normally in adults, it is 60 to 100 per minute, the range. So, when it is called high when it is greater than 100 per minute and it is low when it is less than 60 per minute. So, next thing what we are going to see is rhythm of the pulse. So, whether, whether it is an regular rhythm or irregular in rhythm. So, normally it will be regular in rhythm and if it is irregular in rhythm, see whether it is regularly irregular or irregularly irregular. So, the third thing is amplitude or volume of the pulse. So, it is nothing but the degree of expansion of artery under the middle finger and it signifies stroke volume. The next thing is force. The amount of pressure proximal finger has to exert to obliterate pulse at the middle finger is the force. Approximate measure of systolic blood pressure. Next thing what we are going to see is tension. So with the proximal finger exerting pressure to obliterate systolic pressure, we try to flatten the artery and the middle finger by exerting pressure. So this amount of pressure gives a measure of diastolic pressure. The artery can be collapsed with light or medium or heavy pressure, it indicates low, normal or high diastolic pressure respectively. So the next thing what you have to see is the condition of arterial wall. So now you compress with proximal finger and roll the artery with middle finger. Normal artery is never felt. Next thing is bilateral symmetry. So examine all the above mentioned features or parameters over both the right radial as well as the left radial artery. And now we compare the findings. So in a normal healthy individual, all the findings are identical. So it can be said that in a normal healthy individual, pulse is bilaterally symmetrical. The thing is radio femoral delay. So palpate both the radial and femoral artery simultaneously, that is at the same time. Compare the appearance of the femoral pulse with the appearance of the radius pulse. Mark if any delay in time is present between them. So normally there is no radio femoral delay. Normally radial and femoral pulse appear at the same time. 
ஆக்சிஜன் வாட்டி ஆபிசிங் ஏபெக்ஸ் பல்ஸ் டெஃபிசிட் ஆ கம்பேர் த ஏபெக்ஸ் பீட் வித் ரேடியல் பல்ஸ் ரேட் அண்ட் சி இஃப் தேர் இஸ் எனி பல்ஸ் ஏபெக்ஸ் டெஃபிசிட் சோ ஃபைனலி வி ஷட் கமெண்ட் ஆன் தி கரெக்டர் ஆஃப் தி பல்ஸ் சோ கரெக்டர் ஆஃப் தி பல்ஸ் இஸ் டிஸ்கிரைப்ட் ஆஸ் நார்மல் when no abnormalities are detected in ray rhythm polymer amplitude of the pulse so typical arterial pulse of an healthy individual should therefore be described in the following terms so let as an example the pulse rate is 70 beats per minute the beats are regular in rhythm and equal in volume the pulse is of moderate volume and is not collapsing in character and is bilaterally symmetrical the arterial wall is just palpable but neither frequent nor tortuous we can see that in this particular table or column everything has been summarized and neatly presented so the first column character is character of the pulse is given as this and in the second column the corresponding results for the character the right radial artery and in the third column the left radial artery so the first is rate so in right radial artery 85 per minute and left radial artery there should come to be 86 per minute so it is both of them regular into the force moderate both of them volume moderate both of them tension moderate both of them condition of pressure was not felt in both of them radio femoral delay absent on both the side for apex pulse deficit absent on both the side bilateral symmetry is present on both the side now we are going to find the effect of exercise on radial pulse so first before asking the subject to do exercise you count the resting pulse rate of the subject and now you ask him to do the exercise by any of the following three methods first method chair stepping at the rate of 30 per minute second method hopping at the rate of 30 times per minute third method running and walking at measured distance now immediately after the completion of exercise you count the pulse for 15 seconds so at the end of 15 seconds you note down the rate now ask the subject to take rest for 15 seconds now time will go uh, go to 30th second beginning of 30th second now you once again start to count the pulse for another 15 seconds so by the end of 45th second you note down the pulse rate and once again you ask the subject to take rest for another 15 seconds so now the time will become 60th second and now you start to count the pulse for another 15 seconds and by the end of 70th second you note down so like this we are going to 15 seconds you are going to come 15 seconds rest or another 15 seconds you are going to come 15 seconds rest like that so you are going to do this procedure till the rate falls below the resting pulse rate or reaches the resting level and after that you plot a graph of the pulse rate we obtain through this procedure against the time interval as you can see in the left side there is a table called so first column time in second second column rate per rate per 15 second and third column rate per minute so we are going to obtain data and fill it in the first column the second column corresponding to the first column and the data what we get in second column which should be multiplied with 4 and it should be converted for rate per minute and filled in the third column so first initial this is calculated and from the subject we found that it is 686 per so subject has been asked to do the exercise and after the completion of the exercise immediately says we are going to start counting the pulse at the end of 15th second the pulse rate was found to be 28 and it has been noted down and the subject has been asked to take rest for 15 seconds so at the now the time has been passed and that's reached 30th second now once again we are going to start on the pulse so from 30th second to 40th second at the end of 40th second we have noted down the pulse and it has been found to be 24 per 15 seconds and once again the subject has been allowed to take rest for another 15 seconds so time has reached 60 seconds and now the uh, we have started we are once again we are starting to count the pulse for another 15 seconds and by the end of 7 to 15 second we have noted down the rate which is 21 per 15 second so the rate has been multiplied with 4 and correspondingly filled in the third column and we have found out it has reached just below the resting pulse rate at the end of 7 to 15 second and now we have stopped the procedure and we don't want to proceed further since we have reached the resting pulse rate or just below the resting pulse we have successfully collected the data and now we are going to plot it as a graph so the graph as you see as you can see the x-axis for time in seconds and the y-axis for pulse rate per minute and from the data we are going to just plot it that's all
no simple process. And don't forget to write down the scale, the top of the graph. Mark the points, the graph, and connect the point. So every pulse record shows an ascending gradient, upstroke or anachronically, followed by a summit and then a descending gradient, downstroke or catatotically. The rising phase of the arterial pulse tracing indicates systolic feeling of the artery at the peak of arterial pressure. Then the pressure starts falling during which a notch known as dichrotic notch is seen, set up due to the vibration of aortic valves when they are closed. From the arterial pulse tracing, we can derive pulse rate, rhythm and filling. In many types of heart hail, abnormal arterial pulse tracing are recorded. So, now let us discuss some questions, important questions regarding this term. The question number one, what is the normal pulse rate in infants, adults, athletes and in old age. So in newborn, it is 120 to 140 per minute. In adult, it is 60 to 100 per minute. In adults, 50 to 60 per minute. Old age, it is 60 to 90 per minute. Okay. Question number 2. What is sinus arrhythmia? So, it is nothing but a, it is a physiological condition in which there is rhythmical increase and decrease in heart rate during inspiration and expiration respectively. Now coming to question number 3. What is tachycardia and bradycardia and what are their physiological and pathological causes? So tachycardia means increase in heart rate above 100 per minute. So physiological causes. Excitement, muscular exercise in newborn, pregnancy, afternoon etc. Pathological causes, fever, thyrotoxicosis, atrial flutter, fibrillation, shock, anemia, etc. So, bradycardia means decrease in heart rate less than 60 per minute. So, physiology is that in athletes, sleep, meditation, pathology classes are hypothyroidism, heart plug, drugs like tics So, now coming to question number 4. Is it possible to have low heart rate with more pulse rate or vice versa? No, it is not possible to have low heart rate with more pulse rate, but the opposite voice versa is possible because heart rate is translated as pulse rate. So now coming to question number 5, what is pulses paradoxes and pulses alternance? So pulses paradoxes. This is an accentuation of normal phenomenon where volume of pulse decreases during inspiration and increases during expiration. In pulses paradoxes, during inspiration, volume of pulses grossly decrease. So, next thing, pulses alternates. In this, there is alternate, weak and strong pulse. So, now coming to the last slide, abnormal pulses. So, in first year, it is wise to learn the names of the abnormal pulses and their characters in their respective forms. And the conditions in which the abnormal pulses occurs, you can learn it in the successive years. So, there are some of the abnormal pulses. Tigratic pulse, thready pulse, pounding pulse, pulses disparience, pulses alternates, pulses pageant, pulses paradoxes, pulses tartars, parlors, have water hand pulse. And you take your time to read the character, their corresponding character, character column, and you coordinate with the waveform that has been given in the waveform column. And also read the conditions. Take your time. With this, now we will conclude our presentation. Thank you all everyone for patiently listening to this.